In the previous lesson, I discussed how to use the Trim tool to make edits in a sequence on a timeline panel. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the other two commonly used tools, the Ripple Edit tool and the Rolling Edit tool. To follow along, go to the Working Files folder, open up Projects, and open up 0603 Ripple Rolling. This will look familiar to you. We've got the bike riding sequence and the six bike riding clips. This time we're going to use just four of them, at least at the get-go. So scroll down a bit, click on Bike Riding 3, and then Shift-click on Bike Riding 6, and drag those four clips over here to the sequence. We have a four-clip sequence now instead of six, because I want to use those two low-angle shots here instead of the higher-angle shots. There we go. Now, let's take a look at the Tools panel here. The top tool, your go-to tool, is the Selection tool. That's on there by default. You almost always have that one selected. As you move around, the tool changes. It's actually a context-sensitive tool that changes to another kind of tool depending on where you're looking at it. If I go over here, I get the Trim tool. Go down here, and I can control that little rubber band. Depends on where I put the tool. It changes into some other tool because it's a context-sensitive tool. But most times you use it as a trim tool like that. You also have a ripple edit tool there. If I click that, it's going to look just like the trim tool, except it's going to be yellow. And here's the rolling edit tool. This will kind of look like the ripple edit tool. It's going to be red, but it works only when you hover between two clips. That means that you can change the length of both clips at the same time. If I were to drag it left, that would lengthen the one to the right and shorten the one to the left. But here I can't do it at all because I'm looking at the entire clip here. There are no header tail frames that I can move around. Those little triangles, again, say there are no header tail frames here that you can work with. So we'll use the Rolling Edit tool only after we have trimmed some stuff away so we've got some head and tail frames to work with. So what difference is there between the Ripple tool and the Trim tool, both of which look very similar, right? I'll go back to the Selection tool, hover over the end here. We've got the Trim tool. I trim it, and we leave a gap. To fill the gap, I've got to right-click in the gap and say Ripple Delete. Kind of an extra step. I'm going to go Controller Command Z to undo that. If I select the Ripple Edit tool and drag that little trim over, watch the right-hand side of the clips, the end of Bike Riding 6, and all those clips, 4, 5, and 6, will all slide over to fill the gap. So a Ripple Edit tool basically does two things at once. It does a trim and a Ripple Delete. That's what Ripple Edit does. It's a very convenient tool. It really is kind of the go-to tool, more so than the trim tool. But at any rate, there it is. You can use it. Now, there are a couple ways to access it. You can just click on this guy to get it, or press the B key to go to the Ripple Edit tool, V being the Selection tool. Watch, I'll go Selection tool, B for Ripple Edit. And what's Rolling Edit tool? Hover over there, N, press the N key, and it's Rolling Edit. But most times you have the V key pressed, and you got the Selection tool, and so you want to go to the Ripple Edit tool. How do you go there? What's the quick way to go there? You hold on a keyboard modifier. Hold on the keyboard modifier, Control and Windows, Command and Mac. When you're hovering over the end of the clip like this, you got the Trim tool. Hold down the keyboard modifier, Control or Command, and boom, it turns into the Ripple Edit tool. And if you get to the intersection, it turns into the Rolling Edit tool. But over here to the side, it's Ripple. Intersection, Rolling, to the side, it's Ripple. Take my finger off the Control key, it's back to being a Trim tool. That's how that works. If I hold down the Control or Command key and then click here, it puts an edit point there such that no matter where I go, no matter what kind of tool I've got selected, when I come back here, it's going to behave like the Ripple Edit tool, like so. I click away to deselect that edit. Press Ctrl or Command Z to undo it. So the Ripple Edit tool really is the tool that you probably will use more often than the Trim tool because you do usually want to have things ripple over. You want to do the Edit, the Trim, and the Ripple Delete at the same time. But nevertheless, you have this option. Let's take a look at Preferences for a moment because this relates to how these tools work. Go to Edit Preferences, or in Mac, Premiere Pro Preferences. Go down here. Go down to Trim. And there's this little checkbox, which is unchecked by default. It says Allow Selection Tool, that's that V tool with just the arrow, to choose Roll and Ripple Trims without the modifier key. In other words, if you just hover over an edit point, it automatically is either Ripple or Rolling, depending on exactly where you're locating the cursor. This way, the Ripple and Rolling are always on by default, you hold on the control key then to access the trim tool to show that works. Say OK. Now when I hover at an edit point, it's going to be the ripple edit tool or rolling and not the trim. Hold on the keyboard modifier and it switches over to the regular trim tool. That's what that checkbox does. And you can choose to have that checkbox checked or not. The default view is to not have it checked. So I'm going to go back to the default because that's what I expect most people will do. So I'll go back to trim, uncheck that, and we'll go back to the default way. All right, let's do some editing. 
So the first order of business is that I want to return this clip back to its previous state. And one thing that's cool about the ripple edit tool is that you can extend the clip and it looks like you're extending it into the next clip. But what you're doing is just lengthening the clip. If I take my trim tool here and just click on here and try to move it to the right, it won't move. It pushes up against this clip. The trim tool won't allow you to extend the length of a clip. The same would be true if I were, let's say, trim this clip on the right. I can use the ripple edit tool to do that and trim that in. And now if I wanted to take the regular trim tool by clicking away and pushing it back, I can't push it back. I can't extend the length of a clip with the trim tool. I'll do Control or Command C to undo that. Click away to deselect that edit point. So what I want to do is I want to extend this guy back out to where it was, and then we'll work on it. So I switch over to the ripple edit tool by hovering near the intersection. If I'm on the intersection and press the Control or Command key, it turns into the rolling edit tool. Now I've got to slide away to get it to be the ripple edit tool. So I'm going to extend this guy back to where it was, which I'm allowed to do with the Ripple Edit tool. I'm going to cut it all the way back down to its original length. Click away for a second here and try to figure out where I want to make my edit really. I want to make it right after they go out of the scene. I think you're getting kind of used to this concept of having people go out of frame. Use my arrow key, my right arrow key to line that guy up. There we go, now they're out. I hover my cursor over the end here, and I'm going to press down the controller command, turn it into the Ripple Edit tool. And I'm going to just drag this in. Once I click, it puts the edit point there so I can actually take my finger off the controller command key because the edit has now been put on the clip and now it's just waiting for me to move it. So I slide it over and now everything else slides over. The gap is filled automatically and now we've got that edit there. Let's see how that works. These guys go right up to the edge of the frame and out. Okay, good. I also want to trim the beginning of the clip so we get them sort of in the scene already to avoid having it be too long. Right about there looks good. I'm going to take my Ripple Edit tool, go to the beginning here. It's going to be the Trim tool. Now I can do this and then right click and say Ripple Delete, which is, you know, the two-step process. So instead, though, I'd rather use the Ripple Edit tool. So I'll deselect that and go Controller Command Z to undo that edit. Hover toward the beginning, press down the Controller Command, get the Ripple Edit tool, drag it over. But now that gap that I created at the beginning is going to be filled because all the clips, all four of these clips are going to slide over to the left. Boom, there they go. So let's see what we've got there. Got them entering the scene there, and we're going to have them go through the frame, and great. What I need to do now is pick them up here as they come into the frame. So let's look right there. You can see there's shadow on the right. Use the back arrow key, the left arrow key to back up. A couple more frames there, and now I'm going to do a ripple edit up to the current time indicator. So I hover toward the beginning of the clip, turns into the trim tool, hold down the controller command. I'm going to put it right at the intersection to show you what goes on there. Turns into the rolling edit. I don't want that, I want ripple edit, so I slide the right a little bit. Now triple edit. Now I click, and the edit point is now placed on the clip. I can take my cursor away, I can go for a walk, whatever I want to do, but that edit point will remain there. And all I need to do is just click on it and drag it over. And that makes that ripple edit. Slides everybody over to the left. Good. Let's take a look at that edit now. Go out of the frame, into the frame. Piece of cake. All right. Right about there, I think I want to then cut. I want to trim these guys over to the left. I could use the trim tool to slide it over and then do a ripple delete, but I'm going to use the ripple edit tool, of course. Hold down the control key here, get the rolling edit tool, so I need to slide over a bit, get the ripple edit, click to make that edit mark, then drag it over, and we're done. Next order of business is to pick this guy up a little bit later in the clip, so I need to click away to deselect that edit point. Now I click again by holding down my controller command click to make that edit point. Drag over to that current time indicator. We've now got these edits. I'll show you the three of them there. I'll show you the two of them there. Here's the first one. And then the next one will come up here in just a moment. There we go. And now we'll trim off the end of this one a little bit. Let's say we're moving along here and camera starts sliding off right about there, so I'll do a trim back to there with the Ripple Edit tool, hold down the controller command, get the Rolling Edit tool, slide off to one side and get the Ripple Edit tool. I can take my cursor away now, I've got the edit point put on the clip, drag it over. I've got that, and finally I'm going to trim the end here, again to the point where I like that little pan, so I like to go three seconds before that pan just to let it sort of settle in. So it's 2116 up here. So I'm going to go back to like 1816 here. I'll go back to 1816 or so, right around there. It doesn't have to be exact. I need to click away now to turn off or deselect that edit point. Now I'm going to put one here at the beginning by holding on the controller command key, and now I'll drag it over. Got it. Now if I do a ripple edit at the end of this clip, it doesn't really make much difference because there's no clip next to it. 
So I can do ripple or trim, it'll have the same function. So I'll take my trim tool and just drag this guy over to the left like that. We've now got this guy all nice and trimmed up. I want to expand the view of the clips a little bit by just pressing the backslash key. The backslash key spreads out the view, zooms in on the clips so you get a better view of the clips there. You can work with them a little better when they're larger like that. It doesn't change their length, it just changes their relative length by zooming in on the sequence. All right, and click away to deselect that. Now we're going to use the rolling edit tool. I want to edit between two clips. So let's say right there, where we go from there to there. I want to extend her ride a little bit farther and shorten this clip on the right. So we won't change the overall length of this sequence, but I will extend this clip a little bit to the right. And when I do that, I'm kind of moving into this next clip. I'm going to roll the edit so that we roll this little edit point into the next clip a little bit and extend the one on the left, shorten the one on the right. The way to do that is to get a rolling edit tool. I hover at the intersection now, press down the controller command key, and there's the rolling edit tool, that four arrow thing. Now I just click on that. I can take my finger off the control key. Don't need to worry about what I'm holding over here. The cursor will always turn into the rolling edit tool where you've got that edit already placed. I can drag this to the right a little bit. Right about there. So I'm extending the clip on the left, the point of view, looking at the rider. I'm also shortening the clip on the right, shortening the introduction, the end point. I've just changed that edit. Let's see how that looks. Goes from there to there. That's good. Let's do the same thing back here. We got the folks going through the scene here. The timing is just right, I think. We can adjust it overall by putting a rolling edit there. So I'm going to hover over there, hold on the control key at the command key, and turn it into the rolling edit tool. Click to place the edit there, and now drag it left or right. And the timing will be the same, just that they will not go out of frame here, and then we'll pause for a while until they come into frame on the right. Let's just see how that works. They don't go out of frame, then they come into frame, which is a bit of an awkward edit. I think you'll probably agree with that. But I'm going to go back and hover over there. The edit point's not gone away. It's still there. Just that. So they do go out of frame. Maybe go a little bit farther out of frame, and that'll be about there. Here we go. Now let's watch it. Yeah, there you got it. All right, let's do one more rolling edit here. Let's go along here to where we go from that shot, going off the distance, to that shot there. So I'm going to put my cursor between the two, hold on the controller command key, click there to add that edit. And now I'm going to drag this thing left or right. Let's see here. How much farther do we want to go off into the distance there? Go a little bit farther off into the distance like so and pick up this rider a little bit later. And that means now we've not changed the length of the overall project. The sequence stays the same length, but we've changed where the edit goes there. We've rolled the edit to the right. Let's just see how that works. Farther off into the distance, and then pick her up like that. So that's how you make ripple and rolling edits. You might come to make ripple edits so often that you might want to switch the preferences so that when you click over an intersection, it becomes the ripple edit tool rather than the trim tool. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep my preferences at the default settings where you hold your cursor over an intersection and it becomes the trim tool unless you hold down a controller command, modifier key, becomes a ripple tool or the rolling edit tool, like so.